Hey GED students, let's take a look at this example. It says simplify and do not use a calculator. And I told you that because this is a very non-calculator uh, style example of a math problem. Now, this is just a great example of how you guys will study and study and study the basics and still not be prepared for the GED because this is kind of the kind of thing that you will have to utilize the order of operations on and utilize exponents on. And usually you guys practice the two skills separately, but not together. As you can see, there's not really that many operations going on here. So when you graduate, when you're talking about order of operations, it's not that you should graduate into doing more and more and more and more operations in a problem. It's that you should graduate to doing higher level numbers and higher level operations. Uh, for example, just a little more sophisticated is what I mean by that. So for example, of course, you can see that I'm not just adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing in this expression. I have uh, exponents. I have powers. And I have a, a root here, a power and a root. Um, and so those are examples of exponents. And you can see that I have some negative numbers going on. I'm taking the cubed, cubed, root of a negative number. So, you know, just getting a little trickier, more sophisticated with my operations and my numbers, not just, you know, getting dozens of operations in a same single example. So with that in mind, so let's hit up the order of operations, which says we should deal with any groupings, then any exponents, then multiplication and its inverse before we finally hit up addition and its inverse. So multiplication and its inverse are multiplication, division, and addition, and it's inverse or addition, subtraction. So you might say to me, Kate, there's no groupings because there's no parentheses. And I would agree with you that there are no groupings, but not because there's no parentheses. So first place my eyes flickered was inside this radical, right? Groupings can happen in a lot of places, just basically insides. But looking on the inside of that radical, there is nothing to do. So I do agree with you. I do agree that there's no groupings here. So next thing I'm going to work on then is my exponents. So I have two little exponential expressions within this larger expression. I have three to the third power and I have the cube root of negative 125. Since they share no numbers, they don't touch. I can go ahead. I'll just do them at the same time. So three to the third power. Remember, it does not mean three times three. Again, it does not mean three times three. It means three multiplying by itself three times, multiplying. So three times three is nine, yeah, but I still need to multiply it by a third three. And so three to the third power is 27. I'm gonna write that under there. Now, you don't have to memorize your perfect cubes, but if you do, it makes your life easier because they do kind of like perfect cubes and you don't really have to go past like six cubed, five cubed, because they start getting really big in a hurry. Um, so three cubed, and then we're going to do this, the cube root of negative 125. Now, if you have your perfect cubes memorized, you know what a cube root is because we're just moving forwards or backwards. But if you don't, now we're looking at a little bit of guess and check. So let's think about what this means. The cubed root of negative 125. Well, cube root is the opposite of cubing. So basically what I'm asking here is what number if I raised it to the third power, would give me negative 125. Well, you might guess, and you'd be using some good logic, that it's probably a negative number. And besides that, if you have no idea about your perfect cubes, you'd be, just be kind of like randomly guessing. But here's some things I notice. I notice this is an odd number. Um, I know that when I multiply with odds, I get odds. So if I'm going to square odds, I'm going to cube odds, I'm going to get odd numbers. So that's a big clue. I'm looking at an odd number. I also see it ends with fives. And I know my five times tables always ends with five. So it's a pretty good guess that it's going to be negative five or negative 15 or negative 25. But I also know that cubes get big in a hurry. So my guess here is it's negative five cubed. That would give me negative 125. And let me make sure I put that in parentheses. It doesn't actually make a difference in this problem, but I am looking at cubing the whole thing, including the negative. So let's take a look. If I do negative five times negative five times negative five, would it give me negative 125? Okay, negative five times negative five is a positive 25. And I'm gonna multiply that by my remaining negative five. Sorry, I'm going up, you guys. Oh, tricky, what a jerk. 
Okay, so 25 times negative 5, and again, I do argue that everybody knows how to count by 25s, uh, at least in the U.S., because everybody has counted quarters. <laughs> so 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, and of course, if I just multiply with one negative, my answer is still negative, and so I was right. Now, careful. A lot of students, you know, I just talk so much, they go, oh, negative 125, I'll write that right there. No, you guys, I was checking my guess. I was checking to see if I cubed negative five, would it give me one negative 125? And indeed it did. And so the cube root of negative 125 is negative five. Now, here's another place where students screw this up. They did all this right. They remembered their cubes, their cube root. They juggled the negative well, and now they just go, oh, 27 minus five. And then it's their secretarial skills biting them in the foot. What am I talking about? Well, we saw three to the third power simplified to 27. We replaced that part of the expression. We saw the cubed root of negative 125 simplified to negative five. So we found, you know, um, a simpler form of that part of the expression. But be careful. There's still a symbol we haven't used. Don't lose it, you guys. Don't let your secretarial skills drop, shoot you in the foot. If I haven't used that minus sign above there, it's still there. Now you might say, Kate, but I already have a negative sign. Yep, that was for the negative 125. And so what does this problem say now? It says 27 minus negative five. And then you might say, how do I minus a minus? Well, remember that the opposite and the opposite, like if you do two opposites, it cancels each other out, okay? So it's like taking away a charge. Like imagine your bank account was $27 and then the bank said, hey, we're gonna take away that $5 charge we charged you. Your bank account balance would actually go up. It would go up by $5, okay? So subtracting a negative is the same thing as addition. It's equivalent, okay? So 27 plus five then, uh, what do I get? 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Looked like a simple little example. The order of operations wasn't so complex, but man, were we having to juggle some challenging exponent and negative concepts. Ah, woohoo, fun. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments. Otherwise, happy learning.